Hi there. Now for this question then, you were given this setup here and asked to find the tension in the string PR. And it turns out to be 16.1 newtons to three significant figures. So if you didn't get this or just want to see how I did it, I'm going to show you three different methods. Some are better than others. Or you might want to just fast forward because I'm going to go quite slowly through this and it's quite a long video. First of all though, what you're going to need to do is draw in the forces acting on the two kilogram particle. And if we mark in those forces, you've got the weight of the particle, 2g newtons, and you've got the two tensions in the strings, which I've labeled TPR and TQR. Now, Generally, when you're doing questions like this, the first thing you tend to think of, or I tend to think of anyway, is it's a resolving question, resolving forces. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with resolving forces or splitting a force into two components. If not, do check out my earlier video tutorials. But very briefly, if you've got a force F and you know one of the angles between one of the components, let's say we know this one, theta. I showed you in that tutorial that the one that contains the angle theta, this component is always F cosine of that angle theta, whereas the one that doesn't contain the angle theta is F sine theta. So you're going to need this idea here. Now, this is a very special question because not all questions like this have a right angle in here. If you look carefully, we've got 55 degrees, 35 degrees, which total 90 degrees. And that means that this angle has to be a right angle. Normally, we would resolve vertically and horizontally. But because we've got a right angle, if we resolve along the direction of one of the strings, it means that the other force, because it's perpendicular, doesn't enter the equation. And this is how I'm going to show you how we do this first one. I'm going to resolve in the direction of RP. So if I just mark that in, that we're going to resolve in the direction of RP along that tension, then what I need to do is create some dotted lines. Something like this, okay? We've got this dotted line where I extend the line PR, and I've got this dotted line here where I extend QR. And I've also drawn in a horizontal line. So all I need to do is find either this angle in here or this angle in here for when it comes to resolving. I'm going to go for this angle, but it's up to you. And I can see then that this angle in here will be 35 degrees because it's alternate to the one up here, two parallel lines, OK? So if that's 35 degrees and this is 90 degrees, then this must be 55 degrees. And if that's 55 degrees, knowing that this is 90 degrees in here, it means that this angle in here must be 35 degrees. So I'll just mark that in like so. So I've got all of the force, the tension in that string acting in this direction, in the positive sense. So I've therefore got tension, PR, and then I've got the component of the weight of 2g acting in the opposite direction down here, okay? Because remember that weight can be split into two, two components, one that direction and one that direction. This component will be perpendicular, so it has no effect. We're only interested in that component there. And it contains the angle of 35 degrees. So by this rule here, it's going to be that force, 2g, cosine, because it contains the angle of 35 degrees. And because it acts in the opposite sense to my arrow here, it's going to be negative. Now, the force TQR, that tension, is perpendicular to the direction we're resolving, so it has no effect. 
So this is my resultant force then in this direction. And because it's in equilibrium, that resultant force must be equal to zero. So it's just a question now of rearranging this and solving it for that tension. So if I add 2g cos 35 degrees to both sides and work in degrees mode on my calculator, it comes out at 16.055 and so on, which when rounded is 16.1 newtons to three significant figures. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it would be to, say, use the triangle of forces, which is very easy when we've got a right angle here. So again, I'm assuming that you're familiar with drawing a triangle of forces. You can see I've drawn it here, where we've got the weight, 2g, and it's followed by the tension, pr, okay, up there. And we know that the two tensions are at right angles. So I've joined the tension QR onto the end of the arrow for the tension PR. And it takes us back to this point here. Remember, it must form a closed triangle because the particle's in equilibrium. There's no resultant force. And then if you put in your angles, you'll see this one's 35 degrees. Okay. And this one's 55 degrees. So we can just use basic trigonometry to solve this. If we take this triangle, this side here is the adjacent side and the 2G is the hypotenuse. So using the adjacent and the hypotenuse, that's the cosine of the angle 35 degrees. So the cosine of 35 degrees equals the adjacent side, that's T PR, the tension in PR, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the 2g. Rearrange this for the tension pr, and you end up with 2g times the cosine of 35 degrees. And that was the calculation we had over here, which as you can see, turned out to be 16.1 newtons to three significant figures. We could easily go on and work out that tension qr, by just using trigonometry, which is the next part of the question anyway. Now, the other method, which is generally done, is going back to resolving, where we take our diagram, let's just draw it back again, okay? And we resolve in the vertical and horizontal senses, okay? Now, I would normally do that, but because this was 90 degrees, it became easier to work in this way. But I'll show you. If we drew in the dotted lines, horizontally and vertically, and put in our angles, you can see we've got 55 degrees here. It's alternate to the 55 degrees there. And similarly, the 35 degrees here, these are alternate angles. Then if I resolve, Vertically, this is what happens, okay? We'll just put it down here, resolving vertically, taking upwards as positive. Then the component of this tension upwards, okay? Because it doesn't contain the angle of 55 degrees in this 90 degrees, okay? Will be the tension, TPR, sine of that angle of 55 degrees, okay? By using this idea here. We've got the component of the tension in QR. Remember, it's got one component this way, one upwards. The one upwards is the one we're interested in, and that one will be the sine of 35 degrees because it doesn't contain that angle of 35. It's upwards in the positive sense, okay? So it'll be T QR sine of 35 degrees. And then you've got all of the weight acting downwards in the negative sense there. So that'd be minus 2g. And this would be the resultant force acting on the particle. And that resultant force is zero because it's in equilibrium. So I've got two unknowns here, you see. So not an easy equation to solve. I'd need another equation with these two unknowns in so I could solve simultaneously. And what we do to get that is to resolve horizontally. So if I take to the right as positive, then 
if I take this tension here, which has two components, one in that direction, one in that direction, remember the vertical one has no effect because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. This component, though, because it contains the angle of 35 degrees, will be the cosine of it. So you're going to have TQR cosine of 35 degrees. The weight has no effect because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in, so we can forget about that. Then we turn to this tension here, which can be split into two components, one upwards and one in this direction. The one upwards has no effect because it's perpendicular to the direction we're going in, but this one contains the angle, so it's cosine of 55 degrees. And so it'll be TPR, cosine 55 degrees, but because it acts towards the left, the opposite sense to this, that will be negative. So you've got TPR, cosine of 55 degrees. That's our resultant force, and we know it's in equilibrium, so it must equal zero. So two simultaneous equations here then to solve. And that's going to be a lot of work. But I'll leave it up to you to do that if you want. You should find, as I say, that you'll get TPR coming out at 16.1 newtons. Anyway, so there we go. That's how you can do part A of this question.